All right, I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna read two of these quotes. I've Let's been go. I've been gathering uh, Dr. Joe quotes. These quotes really resonated with me, and I just want to share them with you and get your thoughts. The only thing I can assure you of is this: the unknown has l- never let me down. And I also want to say that I really love the quote that says, um, "When you are in the sweet spot of the generous present moment." So how do those two things tie into the work that you're doing, the generous present moment and living in the unknown? Yes, yeah, so I, I, here's a simple example. Um, most people, you know, the brain is a record of the past. It's an artifact of everything we've learned and experienced to this moment. And so memories are primarily the storehouse of what the neocortex holds, right? So most people wake up in the morning and the first thing they do is they think about their problems. Yeah. And those problems are memories that are etched in the brain that are connected to certain people yeah. and certain things and certain times and places. So theoretically, the moment they remember their problems, they're thinking in the past. The memory is the past, right? And since every one of those problems has an emotion associated with it, the moment they feel unhappy, the moment they feel frustrated, the moment they feel resentful, the moment they feel fear, now the body's in the past. Thoughts are the language of the brain, feelings are the language of the body. Thought and feeling, image and an emotion, stimulus and response, and you're literally unconsciously conditioning the body to become the mind of that emotion. The body will memorize that emotion, right? Yeah. So yeah. that is the familiar past, that's the known. Yeah. And so then the body's so objective, as we said earlier, when it's living by that emotional state, it does not know the difference between the real life experience that created that emotion and the emotion that person's fabricating by memory alone. For that person, their body's in the past. Their lit- body's literally in the past and it's gonna yeah. cause them to feel certain emotions from the past, to habituate and behave like they're in the past, and to remember and think that they're in the past. Okay, so that's the known. And so then, if you can't think greater than how you feel, or feelings have become the means of thinking, you're thinking in the past, don't expect your life to change. Get up and run through a series of routine behaviors. Get out of bed on the same side, stretch the same way, go down to the toilet, use it the same way, go to the coffee maker, then go to the shower, then get dressed, and then eat breakfast at the same seat, then drive to work and do the same things. Um, You do that for five years now, your body is on autopilot and it's yeah. taking you into that predictable future. A predictable future is the known, right? You can you can predict a person's day by watching their last day, sure. right? Mm-hmm. So, so now we lose that free will to a set of programs and that predictable future is also the known. Okay, so if the familiar past is the known and the predictable future is the known, there's only one place where the unknown exists and that's the sweet spot of the generous present moment, right? And mm. so to labor, see how he did that? He brought it all together, look at that. <laughs> to labor for the present moment takes an enormous amount of mm. awareness mm. or consciousness, in other words, not going unconscious. Right. An enormous amount of energy when your body wants to get up and it mm. wants, and you have to work in training the animal, right? So that, that unknown, happens to be when we see the greatest amount of changes that take place in the brain. The brain reboots and it gets highly coherent and the energy builds in the brain. And the person is dissociated from anything known in their life, any person, any object, anything, any place. And we call that moment the sweet spot because that's the moment you're nobody. You don't even aware that you have a body. You're no one, you're not, you're not your identity, you're not your personality, you're not, you're not thinking of anybody in your any person in your life. You're not thinking of your cell phone, your car. You're you're in nothing. You're in nowhere. You're in no time. That that is when you're pure consciousness, and that is kind of the door out of this three dimensional reality. That is the door to the unknown. That's where all possibilities. You know, the eternal present moment. There's so many biological effects that take place when a person's in that state between their heart and their brain, uh, between the energy that the cell emits. I could go yeah. on. Uh, the, 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 the person for the first time is not afraid of the unknown. You know, when we're living in stress and living in survival, the unknown, you run from it. Better chances of survival. That's kind of, that's kind of programmed into our biology. So now you're in the unknown and nothing dangerous happens to you, right? And you labor for that present moment. And what happens is the person can actually relax into the present moment in that unknown. And when nothing happens, they kind of broaden their, their, their prison to be more present. And 
it's a skill that the more you practice it, the better you get at it. So why is that important? Because you know when someone's present with you in your life because they're paying attention to you. Mm -hmm. You know when your 19-year-old kid is not present with you because he's not paying attention to you. Okay, <laughs> well, if you're really going to create something new, you cannot create from the known. You gotta get in the unknown. You gotta be able to be comfortable there without a name, without a face, without a weight, without a diet, wow. without a profession. You gotta linger as pure consciousness, and we all have that ability. That door then is where infinite possibilities exist. That's when people start creating, right, right in that moment. That's mm. the elegant moment of creation. So then when a person in that state marries a clear intention, and all you need is a coherent brain for that, with an elevated emotion, all you need is a coherent heart, yeah. they got a Wi-Fi signal. <laughs> they got yeah. a Wi-Fi signal that allows them uh, to feel connected. So then when they do that well, and the experiment every day is to change their energy, if I change my energy, will my life change? And you start seeing the synchronicities, you start seeing yep. the coincidences, yep. you start seeing the opportunities, you have the, huh, moments like, really? This is actually working? Like the experiment is actually producing, instead of me going and getting it and working for it, it's somehow coming to me, uh, like, is it really that I'm creating this? Now we move from that place of being the victim in my, our lives to being the creator of our lives. So, so when I say that the unknown has never let me down, what I mean by that is I think we create different experiences in our life and when it gets boring and when it gets predictable yeah. and it gets familiar and you know better and mm. you're staying Mm. and you, you, you know you can't go back because it's too familiar mm. and you gotta go and there's no evidence, no one else is doing it and not, you know, your friends are where you're at and you're at that dark mm. night of the soul mm. where you're weighing what you know against what you don't know and there's no person in your life that you can ask because they're gonna give you their experience and it doesn't feel right and, and you gotta go and you just gotta, you gotta trust if you do that, when I say the unknown has never let me down, when you go in that direction, yeah. it's always greater than you think. It's always- It's it, the hero's journey. It is the hero's journey. It is the moment you are liberated, and if you can stay in that state, in that state of chaos, you know, unpredictable order, you know, the novelty of the unknown. Yeah. And stay there and get a coherent heart and a coherent brain. And you start reorganizing that incoherence, that dissonance, the chaos back into order. Reality somehow seems to organize uh, to reflect that change. It's just, it's just that we got to get comfortable uh, in yeah. the unknown. The Soul Boom Podcast. Subscribe now on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and wherever else you get your stupid podcasts.